Hey everybody, welcome to another After Effects CS6 tutorial. I'm your host, Buddy Blackford, and today I want to go over motion blur with you. I've been using it in a couple of my tutorials in text, so I might as well go over how to use it properly and everything that you need to know to make it turn out correct. So motion blur is when um, like an object moves and you s can't see all of it because it's moving so fast, it's blurred out. And After Effects does this easily and uh, pretty nicely. And there's a couple settings you can change to fix it up if you want to and everything like that. You can also create some different looking effects with it, so that's pretty cool. So all I have right now is just a picture. And all I did was animate it from left to right. And if, and if I uh, bring up the position, these are my keyframes here. And fairly simple and easy. So I'm just going to actually move it off the screen a little more. Yeah, there we go. And if I ramp preview this and it goes across the screen here, it doesn't have any any kind of motion blur to it. So every frame is just like this and and it doesn't really look too real. So if you want to make it like appealing to the eye, you may want to add motion blur. And motion blur adds a little bit more time to your render, but it's uh, worth it usually and makes things look nice. So the way to start adding motion blur is um, to have a an animation that goes decently fast. So let's uh, s start by making sure you have your keyframes reasonably close to each other and mine are under one second right now. So this is like starting at zero and this is almost a half a second. So we've got that going on. And the next thing we need to do is come to this button right here, where my mouse is, with the uh, three faded, and it, this enables the motion blur. And you can't add motion blur unless you have this button enabled. And uh, what, what this does, or what this is here for, is if you have a bunch of stuff with motion blur on your screen, it could take time to render the screen, so you can quickly turn that off to see what you're doing but realize that you have your motion blur on. So uh, after that you need to come to this and en enable it per layer. So this enables it for the comp and this enables it per layer. Now I click on that and you can see now we have a motion blur. Now I'll, z uh, I'll do a little ramp preview for you. And we can see now that it has a blur when it's going across and it looks a little more realistic. So here we go. Motion blur, no motion blur. So that's what it looks like there. So you can either just do it like that and keep the uh, regular settings that After Effects has, or we can change the settings. And there's only four settings, so it's not that complicated. So I'm, I'll show you right now. They're within the composition settings. So come up to composition, go to composition settings, and come over here to, I'll bring it over here to your advanced tab. Now motion blur there's a whole section right here. So we've got shutter angle, phase, samples per frame, and adaptive sample limit. This is These two at the top are going to affect what your shutter uh, like the length and how it looks and stuff like that and the bottom ones are going to affect the quality of your motion blur. So the shutter angle is pretty much the length of the blur and it can go from 0 to 720 degrees. So if I bring this to like 30 degrees, just check out the motion blur picture at the top and make sure you have your preview checked if you want to see how this happens in real time. Now the motion blur is a lot less. Now I'll bring this up to 720, which is the max, and the motion blur is a lot longer. So I'll bring this back to 180 and this is the default settings are 180 and negative 90 for now. So what we got next to it is the shutter phase and that gives the uh, it should be negative one half of the shutter angle to give you a more of a realistic look. The shutter phase uh, shows like the blur either after the uh, current time indicator or before it. So if I bring this into the positives, watch where the 
uh, blur goes compared to where the picture is. Oh, let me uh, scrub. Now it's way ahead. That's because I put it into the positives. So the picture, you can tell where it used to be by these orange, I mean purple, man, I must be colorblind, by these purple dots here, these squares. That's where it used to be. Now, if you're at negative one half, it's going to be right in the middle. And if I start going uh, even more negative, it's probably it's going to be to the left. There we go. And the shutter phase goes to 360 on both sides. So I can bring this to 360 on the uh, positive 360 or negative 360. So if I bring the shutter angle, let's just try like experimenting with it and see what happens. I'll bring the shutter angle up to 520. And now I'm going to have to bust out my calculator because I can't think of what this is. is. So. 520 divided by 2, negative 260 is what this should be at to make it look nice. There we go. So that's how you uh, mess with the uh, shutter angle and shutter phase. Now you can, uh, if you want to create some different kind of like time effects, you can change the shutter phase and all that stuff. Um, I'm just going to put it back to where it was.